When Will and Chris came to me with the business plan for Presidio, I thought they were crazy. Yeah, I've always been an entrepreneur. I was an entrepreneur in high school, made websites, and had always wanted to do something entrepreneurial. I had an opportunity to work with great entrepreneurs before starting Presidio, and I wanted to create my own vision for what that meant. And I saw a lot of great things that companies could do, and I saw a lot of bad things that companies could do, and I wanted to reinforce the great things, and I wanted to make the bad things great. And so I wanted to create a business that was founded on culture, that was founded on treating people right, that was founded on growing and developing people so that they can give back and be more and give more and do more. When I had the opportunity to partner with Chris to create Presidio, I knew that he was absolutely the best partner who was focused on doing the same things. I'd like to say it started with a friendship. It really did. Obviously, if you look at us technically and personality wise, it makes some sense. We're completely different people. You've got the engineer that's been doing this, you know, the operation side for a long time. You got the Harvard finance guy, right, that runs that side. So if you think about, you know, what does it take to run an oil and gas business? It's probably those two guys, right? You got an engineering side and you got a, a finance side. It's usually one or the other, not both being co-CEOs, but this is the first time I've ever done a co-CEO. I can't imagine, and having the past of running companies on my own, being able to do it and do it successfully if that person's not your friend. If we're gonna start a business, then how about we don't do what everybody else is doing, and i.e. the run against the herd. What if we go the opposite direction? And I remember Will asking me, he's like, well, what does that mean? So if we're gonna do the opposite of that, what is the opposite of that? And I was like, I don't know, but buy a bunch of old crap? Presidio. My hope is that you could start blurring the lines between saying that, oh, they just produce oil and gas to saying, well, they're using technology to produce oil and gas. And they're using it to produce it way more efficiently than other people are. In our first 18 months in business, we weren't able to raise a single dollar. And we had a lot of terrible meetings with investors because people generally thought that what we were doing was stupid. They said, why would you be investing in assets that are trading for two to three times cash flow? There's a reason why they're trading for two to three times cash flow. It's because they're bad. Whereas we can go buy this growth stuff for 20 times cash flow, but boy, it's gonna grow so much that it's gonna pay for the fact that we have to pay so much for these assets. So how many wells do you guys want to acquire? Yeah, so that's a, that's a pretty good question. I think that probably the answer is all of them. <laughs> but yeah, no, we have, we have visions of getting really big. I mean, 200,000 plus wells. You know, I think that our mentality is we are the last best steward for these wells. We operate them efficiently. We operate them safely. We improve the environmental profile of these assets from emission reductions. We can keep these wells online longer by lowering cost, driving value for not only our investors, but for the mineral owners as well. So I think the answer is we want to acquire as many as we can, as, as many as there are out there to, to operate efficiently. You know, people were raising capital to drill all these wells. We were trying to raise capital by producing wells. We had to show a return that was going to match what people were getting from drilling. And the way that we were able to do that was to say, okay, fine, we can cut expenses by 50%. Now, we didn't know that we could do it at the time. And ultimately, we've now cut costs by over 70%. And so we've been able to do everything that we thought that we could do, but at the time, nobody was doing it. I like to say that if we come behind an operator and an operator that was supposed to be focused on growth, is focused on the things that we do, they weren't actually focused on growth. So the reason they spend money and how they spend money and where they spend money is appropriate for their business model because they're growing under that premise of a new well, a new field, those kind of things. If they're focused on the things I'm doing, they're looking at $5, $10, $20 bills. I'm looking for quarters and like nickels in the couch kind of thing. So the amount of value I'm able to create on a unit basis is less than them because of the capital they're spending. But it's just as important to the business model as far as creating our, you know, our returns and things like that. But there were two offsetting targets that we were also going to buy. We were going to buy Apache's assets and we were going to buy a company called Templar. And we showed a map in our very first materials to Morgan Stanley's investment committee in March of 2018 that showed the overlay of what this combined business was going to look like and how we were going to have over 6,000 wells under management. And we were going to operate things at at least 50% less than they were currently being operated. So is your goal to stop at 6,000? No. The formative part of my career was spent at EOG Resources, which is a company that I admire greatly, still do. Different business model than us. They, they definitely are excellent at exploration uh, and development. And again, we're, we're focused efficiently operating properties, so very different business models. But the thing that EOG did, one of the things they did so well, they incrementally improved every day. So they took whatever processes they were doing on day one, and they got a little better on day two, a little better on day three, a little better on day four. Every day, they were committed to learning about what they did and improving upon it. 
And that sounds simple, sounds easy, but it doesn't happen at every company. And we do that here. We, we really get better at everything we do every day. That goes back to this concept of measuring what you do and tightening your feedback loop, and using every tool at your disposal to do that. And so it wasn't readily apparent to me in the beginning that that was what was gonna happen at Presidio. I knew that we had a contrarian philosophy, but really I think that you know, some of the magic that happens here and the reason we've been successful is because we really do focus on improvement every day. And, and never be satisfied on, on, with, with where you are. And, and just those incremental improvements over the course of time add up to a really good company. When I think about why we're here today, it's because we were able to go from zero, a place where we were funding this business out of our checking accounts and paying payroll every two weeks and not really enjoying ourselves to a position that we're in today where we're having a lot of fun and incredible amounts of have, uh, personal development and growth and ability to give back have, evolved along the way. A lot of that has been about trying to find an opportunity to create momentum. And we looked at the various opportunities in the oil and gas space. We thought that this was an underinvested space. We thought it was a place where we could start putting money to work, where we could create momentum. And now that we have the momentum, we've been able to capitalize it on it. And we want to continue to capitalize it in much bigger ways. We want this company to be America's last best steward for oil and gas wells. We operate 3,000 wells today. We have desires to operate 300,000 wells and our momentum is what allows us to do that. You walk around the halls here at Presidio and you see the way people are working and their understanding of what our mission is and what our culture is and how they are growing themselves and learning and doing more and being more and giving back in their own lives, I think is all a very virtuous circle and that's what we're pushing for here.